this is Bonnie, and uh, I purchased uh, my first stamp timber ever uh, stamp set. Um, and this was um, the one from um, Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz, and it's called Stamp Timber 2022. And I was kind of excited. I actually bought it sight unseen. Um, because it was offered, but there wasn't any picture of it when I went ahead and paid and 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 to get it. Last year I could have gotten the um, set before, and I chose not to, and I kind of regretted it. So I thought, well, I'm going to give this one a try, even sight unseen. So my plan is I'm going to stamp that on top of craft paper that I had in my stash, and um, I have not really done very much stamping with foam um, clean type uh, stamping in here, but I'm kind of excited to give this a try. So um, let me show you what this design is. At first when I saw it, I didn't really, I couldn't really see the design, but then I saw the, what uh, Tim Holtz Makers made, and then I got, oh, okay. So this is Santa climbing the ladder um, to the um, chimney of a house and then these beautiful um, evergreen trees. So it will be a great um, stamp to color in and I like to color with colored pencils. So that's my plan. I'm going to use VersaFine Clear Nocturne and just do some stamping and then I'm going to do some coloring. This set also came with um, a really cute little um, snow stencil. And as you saw, it had several sentiments. But this was what was the special that you got with this particular stamp set. Last year, you got to get a um, mask moon. And I would have loved to have had that. I've got the other ones that are in the standard set that um, that is sold, but I did not get the special size that came with Stamp Timber last year, which I would have liked to have had. Okay, so this is absorbing really well into my craft paper. So I'm gonna have to stamp it a second time. And it also could be because I have my um, platform set up a little bit differently that I missed that center part. Okay, there we go. That's a great, you can see all the pretty details to that. It looks very vintage. It's just kind of pretty all by itself, just like that. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and use some of these snowflakes. And my intention is to have the mask moon right here. So I'm gonna randomly have some of these snowflakes, but I think what I'm gonna to have to do is move this over a little bit because I'm gonna have some of them, I'm gonna have them coming off the side. Okay, like that. Gonna have to move this down. Because like I said, I'm gonna have that moon. And I want it to be a little bit more organic looking. Okay. These are really pretty um, sketched snowflakes. And you'll see what I mean as soon as you see me stamping these up. Oops, I'll make sure I get that in there so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. I think that looks really good. I think I could do this one just a little bit more up here towards the top. I can see it just needs a little bit. Okay. That's good. 
Actually, that second pass looks really good on it. I'm gonna think I'm gonna do it on the other ones. Which is why I like the platform. Okay, awesome. So that's what our card basically is going to look like. This is half of a piece of um, card stock, um, just regular eight and a half by 11 cardstock. So I'm using the full size. So it's a rather large um, card or design. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and get out my colored pencils and get started. Okay, so before I get coloring, I thought I'd go ahead and show you how I use uh, the moon mask. Um, I am using chipped sapphire and I like to make a halo um, for my moons. And I have that set right there. And I'm not going to come down here where the Santa is. I'm basically, and I'm going to try to avoid the snowflake a little bit as much as I can. I'm probably going to get a little bit into it. But um, I'm just going to go around the outside of this. And because this is a, a plastic mask instead of a cardstock or anything, which is what I usually use. Um, you got to be really careful with your fingers because um, the ink will come off on it when it's a plastic mask. It's not that it's not something people use. This is what people um, use now. I just happen to like the cardstock masks that I make. But I love the design for the inside of this one. And I thought it was really worth doing that. All right, so that's the kind of halo I like to do around and make the moon. And so you can see how that gives that the design. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead. Lots of times what I'll do is I usually have a different color for inside. Um, and I decided not to. I'm just gonna leave the regular cardstock color for the overall look. But to make the craters, I'm going to be using pumice stone and again, another um, blending brush. So, and you can move the craters around to where you want it to be. Obviously, I don't really want it down here where Santa is. Um, so I thought I'd move it a little bit and try to avoid most of those dots from what's already there. Now these pieces inside can raise up, so you're gonna to have to try to hold them down the best you can. And I might end up having to use a darker gray. And I have a feeling I do, because it's not gonna show up probably on the cardstock. And so the next gray, which I'm gonna do this first just to see if it did do anything, um, I'm gonna go for the hickory. Um, color because I don't think this is yeah that's not going to show anything so I need the next color gray that's a little bit darker and that's hickory smoke we'll see if that one works if not I'll go for the next color okay um, get my mask back on give this a try yeah that's going to give me the color so um, I use my pumice stone a lot, so it could very well be if you try pumice stone, which is a good one to start with first because it's lighter. Um, and if it doesn't show up, then go with a hickory smoke or a darker color, whatever you prefer. But that's usually how I do it. I, lots of times I'll start the lighter if I'm not sure. But I can see it now, so that should work give you so you can see you can see it it's very subtle so what I am going to do because I do like to have a little bit of the contrast myself is I'm thinking I'm trying to think of the next color that I could do that's a little bit darker that I have and I think that's going to be black soot so I could be wrong but in terms of the darkest color after that but I'm going to try a little bit of black set and I'm going to use a smaller 
blending brush and just try to go, Alexa, stop. I didn't know I said anything to have anything to do with her. Um, I'm just going to go around the edges of this to make it look like a shadow. That's why I'm using a smaller brush. I don't think I've ever had, I can't even say her name, A-L-X-A -A, ever say anything in my videos. I don't know what I said. All right, you can see there's a little bit there that's come out further than what I want it to. So um, I can blend that in just to let you know. Let's take a look. Yeah. So you can blend that in so it's not kind of blobby. And that looks pretty good. I like that. All right, so you can see what I'm saying that it gives that. Um, the other thing I do to make that a little bit more subtle is I'm going to come back in with a Puma Stone because I know that it's a lighter color and mine is not really, I want to say, juicy. Um, and I'm just going to go over the top of this whole thing. And that's going to soften it a little bit for me. And that's okay. To get the moon that I want. Okay, so I'm really pleased with that. So um, the next thing I like to do is add a little bit of clouds and I am going to be using um, Chip Sapphire because that will go really good with the background. And, and for this case, I have a piece of torn paper and I just use this over and over again. So I start, you can see the torn piece of paper that I have, I use it a lot. Um, let me see. Yeah, I'm trying to get the right brush. Again, chipped sapphire. And again, like I said, it depends on how juicy your pad is and how much you want to put on and how dark you make it. I don't make a super dark. I don't use a lot of ink when I do my blending. Just enough to get the design. And then I flip this back and forth to get a different, or you can use a different, two different kinds of torn paper if you want to have it so it doesn't look symmetrical. I like it to look different, more organic. So you can see how that looks. I can get a little bit closer for the rest of this. Hold on. Okay. So that was the one that I just used. So I'm going to flip it again. And if you notice, I am blending up and not down, which means I'm holding my paper and going up. That then allows the clouds to be lighter on top to make them look more like clouds, I think. If I go this way, they look more like mountains. So up, clouds. If that makes sense. You can practice another piece of paper and you'll see what I mean. And I can even bring this so I just do pieces of it and still get a different looking cloud without getting out a bunch of papers. And right now what I'm doing is I'm trying to avoid the moon and I don't really go over the moon. I'm trying to get by the moon. And I'm not trying to put a lot on the snowflakes. I think that works. It doesn't take too much time to do this, but when you do a video, it seems like it takes forever. All right, so I'm gonna be bringing that all the way down probably to um, the end of this design because it would all be in the sky anyway. And that's how you think of it. And then like I said, I'm gonna come back with my, I have um, Prisma colored pencils and I'm gonna color. 
And when I do that, I am um, not going to do any talking. I'm just going to color. And so that you, I'll speed it up. So, but I thought maybe you'd like to see this process slower. So, flip it. We're almost done. I think one more. And um, at the very end, I do plan to use the stencil. I, I am going to add the, um, I'll add the snowflakes. All right, so basically I'm gonna leave this blank for now. I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do down here. Um, I know there's a sentiment I might use or I might just add you know, more ink. And I do know that I edged all of my card with ink as well. So the next step will be coloring um, with colored pencil. Okay, I just wanna say before I start coloring that I usually use three shades of colors, not always. Uh, usually a darker color, a medium color, and a lighter color. And I also try to color with a light source and my light source is gonna be the moon. So, um, uh, again, like I said, when I start coloring, I'm going to go ahead and just um, make that go faster speed um, to watch my coloring. I will go ahead and also hold up my pencils as best I can for you to see what colors I am using. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that.
Okay, so I'm um, finishing up. You saw me do all the coloring with my um, colored pencils. And um, what I'm gonna do now is just the edge like I told you with the um, chip sapphire all the way around. And what I did do is I did cut the bottom of this off and I um, cut a little bit of the sides off as well. I decided I wasn't really sure what I was gonna put down there. And I thought, oh, I'm just gonna cut it, make it um, shorter. So um, like I said, I'm just adding this to the edges. And I usually like to do this after I have done my coloring instead of before. Because then the coloring also gets um, gets um, distressed. So um, it's really a fun um, stamp to color. And you, when you color on craft paper, you just have to keep in mind um, that colors that are light show up more than those that, well, the dark show up too. But other ones, the medium ones, really blend in. And so you just have to keep in mind, I kind of like test it when I'm not sure of the color. I'll test it on the craft paper to see if the colors are what I want. I really want, how do I explain it? I want the colors to blend in with the craft paper. Um, if there was such a thing as uh, craft paper pencils, like the, the actual color, of the craft paper, which all craft papers are different color anyway, um, then you would know how to darken it by keeping the craft paper its actual color. And so you have to kind of like, at least I did, try to find a color that would give me the shades of craft paper that I'm using, if that makes sense. So that's what I try to do with the snow because if I use the white, you can see on on um, Santa's fur that it really pops because um, a light color like that will really pop. And I wanted a color just a little bit um, not as bright on the snow. So it also, so there'd be a contrast. So you have to kind of like look at your pencils and look at your mediums and see how that would work. So um, I'm really happy with how that ended up turning out. I think it looks like um, Santa at night. It's kind of cool, I like it. Um, I guess some of the things that I would do possibly, and I don't know that I'm going to, I really like this the way it is, um, is if I wanted the snow to sparkle, I could put something on there to make that sparkle. The same with the snowflakes, but I'm pretty happy. And also was very happy with um, these holes were big enough, most of them, that I could just use my pencil. And I know you could actually go in and do circles, but I liked that they were random and I didn't have to pull out any um, texture paste or anything with it and wait for it to dry. It just was done. So, I mean, I liked that. So at any rate, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it on a card base or if I'm gonna frame it. So we'll see how that works. Um, because if I have a right size frame, I might frame it. So um, thanks so much for stopping by. Um, I know it was a little bit longer video. I did try to shorten it by making the coloring speed up, but um, I will have uh, the colors that I used in terms of the um, Distress Oxide below. Um, I am not going to be writing out the Prismacolor pencils, but you can for the most part see what I did use because I tried to hold them up. If you didn't see them, and you need to know, please write in below and let me know if you need to know some of those colors. Thanks so much for stopping by.